So I started exploring blockchain technology when I was writing a research paper on blockchain for alternate dispute resolution. Um, and at that point, there were hardly a handful of papers on the topic, which made it difficult to go into it. Um, cut to 2020, I participated in my first hackathon and built the first version of a blockchain-based dispute resolution tool where we relied on IPFS for evidence storage. And cut to now, where we have um, two tracks at a core technical conference um, in the middle of uh, Blockchain Week here in Brussels, which is focusing in law and tech. So I guess um, it's fair to say that we've come a long way from uh, people not really considering the intersection of law and tech to now people starting to explore what technology, uh, how technology can be leveraged for the same. So the decentralized tech track is going to be looking at how you can use technology or rather decentralized technologies to build tools to make justice accessible. So the term decentralized uh, justice was actually coined in reference to a platform called Cleros. And Cleros was a blockchain driven arbitration platform. And they use the term decentralized justice because they used blockchain to facilitate the dispute resolution process where they relied on jurors or independent people instead of professional judges um, who were selected by a transparent and decentralized process to eventually impart justice. Um, today's track is also going to be focusing on uh, dispute resolution or conflict prevention. Um, but I think it's also important for us before we do that to expand the term decentralized justice because it shouldn't be just restricted, restricted to dispute resolution. So uh, to me, decentralized uh, justice, um, the decentralized justice space should include all um, uh, all legal applications. So uh, any, um, any decentralized tech which can be used to build legal tools which can facilitate justice should ideally be included within the definition of a decentralized justice space. But um, why should we explore decentralized justice? Well, because our conventional legal system is not uh, designed to provide justice for everyone. Right? It's expensive, it's time consuming, it can be often complicated. In most cases, people are expected to get lawyers, which again, a lot of people cannot afford. So in this track, the first session, we're going to focus on the pain points of the existing legal system. So this would include issues such as cost and time that I already spoke about. Um, it would include issues with respect to um, roadblocks and enforcement of rights, cost of judges, um, issues relating to biased and non-independent judges, issues relating to establishing evidence and, all, and also enforcement of final decisions. So after we address pain points which uh, prevent um, accessible justice, we're going, uh, we're going to be looking at application of tech to build tools to make justice accessible. So Gyan from Starknet is going to be doing a talk on that. Uh, after which, uh, for anybody interested in building tools, we're going to have a <clears throat> Q&A session addressing this specifically. We have a talk by Nandit, who is going to be exploring IPFS for evidence management. And finally, we're going to have a mock dispute session. So, um, yeah. And before we close the introductory session, I just wanted to talk about this document, um, which is how to timestamp a digital document, um, which was uh, referenced in the original Bitcoin white paper. Uh, where um, the writers actually looked at how you can use uh, cryptography and hashing um, to store protected data in a decentralized manner. And the first application they actually, um, and the first application that they actually referred to was legal. It was for intellectual property protection, specifically to protect um, research relating to uh, patents. So yeah, thank you. That brings us to the end of the introductory session.